shots right there. That did not go as planned. True crime satisfies the same urge as watching blackhead popping videos. There's a foreign element in an otherwise perfect environment and it must be removed. Then everything resets to normal. Sorry if you can hear the sink in the background. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new here. I usually talk about travel and various lifestyle things, mostly cooking, the occasional rant, but I also do a monthly book review to help me keep accountable with my New Year's resolution, which is to read one book every month for the entire year. February's book was called Chase Darkness With Me. It is by Billy Jensen, who is a journalist and a man who also started to basically try to solve unsolved crimes on the side. This, this book is of the true crime genre. I'm not gonna get super into detail about a lot of it, but if you're not into true crime and stuff like that freaks you out, then this may not be the video for you. So Billy Jensen was a friend of Patton Oswalt's wife, Michelle McNamara. So she's the one who was trying to find the Golden State Killer, I believe, and like gave him that moniker and basically dedicated a good portion of her life to trying to solve this crime. And she did it voluntarily, which is the same thing this Billy Jensen guy does. So he tries to solve unsolved mysteries and he started to do so by using social media. He doesn't get paid to do it. In fact, he uses his own money to boost the ads on Facebook that he uses to draw attention to finding the perpetrators of the crimes. So he'll find like the video surveillance footage of a murder, for example, put it up on Facebook, add a attention grabbing caption to it, and then get people to hopefully send him clues through Facebook. He mostly deals with unsolved murders, but he sometimes delves into some missing persons cases and he also mentions a fugitive that he found in Mexico using this social media technique. So within the book he shares about his life growing up and particularly his close relationship with his dad, his career starting as a painter for his dad's company and then transitioning into journalism after he finished university and that's what kind of ends up leading him towards wanting to solve these unsolved crimes in his spare time basically like he's a full-time journalist he then starts up tv shows and podcasts and kind of becomes a producer and all of this is surrounding true crime um, sometimes he stars in the the shows none of the shows i heard of but i maybe they're more popular in america i'm not sure so he then moves to la to pursue the true crime like the production and all that that he's doing but also he this is i found this so weird he leaves his wife and kids she's a neurosurgeon so apparently she's always really busy too so that didn't bother her for him to just go and live in LA most of the time. And then his kids were young adults, so they were mostly out of the house at this point or on the verge of being out of the house. And no one seems bothered by this, which I find found kind of odd, but I mean, to each their own, that's obviously their lifestyle. Throughout the book, he talks a lot about the emotional toll that it takes on his life. Like he puts a lot of work in, but he can't seem to stop. He's very passionate about it. He's very driven to help these families find closure and you know, find out what happened to their loved ones so that's not constantly nagging on their minds. I guess in America, there is a 38% chance your killer won't be caught if you get killed in America. That's a paraphrase of one of the things that he wrote in the book. So that's 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 a high amount. And um, obviously the police are needing more resources, but then we have the whole issue of people trying to defund the police. So what's the right answer? I don't know. That's not what this video is gonna be about. That is just kind of where he comes from and why he volunteers his own time, money, and energy to um, trying to help these people find closure as much closure as they can get. So overall, I had mixed feelings about this book. It was slow and boring at times, and honestly, it just got really repetitive because as I mentioned, like a lot of these crimes go unsolved and you never find out, you know, who was indeed the murderer of whoever. Um, and he's constantly tallying. He's like, okay, out of the 200,000 murders I have to solve, I've now solved 11, so there's 197, whatever. I'm not good at math. Yeah, so apart from the fact that it got a bit repetitive um, on occasion, my biggest takeaway was the passion that he had and the empathy and the drive to help others. Like I mentioned before, he did this without being paid. He used his own money to try to solve these murders. And I guess in a way it did kind of end up like he got some sort of payment because he could use some of these stories for his journalism or his television, you know, it wasn't totally all for free, but I mean, the large majority of it, I think really just came from his own will and generosity and again, desire to help people find peace and 
hopefully justice. Would I recommend it? If you're into true crime, I would say give it a go. It's just very different. It's unique in that it shares many short, quick histories of many different cases. But what I did really like about it was it focuses on the victim and their families, which I think is really important because too often murderers and criminals get all of the spotlight. Everyone wants to know the history of, you know, Ted Bundy, who is a terrible person and I think would seek out the attention and enjoy the attention that would derive from the attention he received. And so I basically appreciated his focus on the victims, their families, and his process that he used to solve these crimes. It's really interesting too, because he wasn't bound by any sort of police procedures or um, like I've read a couple of books from the perspective of lawyers, like the uh, Lacey Patterson case, Peterson, Lacey Peterson, read one of the books that her attorneys had written or like the attorney representing the state, I guess, um, against Scott Peterson. Yeah, they're bound by certain rules and Billy Jensen's rules kind of were just like, if the police are gaining in on a suspect or ask him not to be involved, he doesn't involve himself. If they don't care, he just goes ahead. And the only other way he would not do it is if the family says no, but otherwise he's not really bound by many rules apart from the law itself. It was just interesting kind of learning about his process. He did a whole section at the back of like how to become a sleuth or whatever. And yeah, it was just interesting that he uses social media as his main way to reach people and get word out about these crimes. And it's very ingenious. Like you would think more people would do this to solve crimes, but I don't know, maybe it's a little bit more used these days. I, I just don't know. Uh, the downside for the book is that there's not really a lot of closure, which again, is just a reflection of the reality of the situation, but it is interesting and unique. And at the end, again, he has this call to action to people if they want to volunteer a lot of their time and money and energy to solving crimes, kind of how to do it. He like lays it out. He lays out rules to follow and that sort of thing. I personally wouldn't recommend it because again, it is very emotionally taxing work and takes up an extraordinary amount of time and money and you don't really get paid for it and you know you might get thanks you might not too it's, he's got some interesting stories that he shares he has an interesting like i really liked the stuff he shared about him and his dad's relationship so that was a cool part of that i'd say give it a go if true crime's your thing it's a pretty breezy read and apart from a few lulls here and there, overall, I, I enjoyed it. So that was my February book. I did it. Now I'm on to my March book, month number three of 2021. So I'm trying to read Bridgerton. It's been fine so far, but I have put it down for a couple days and haven't got back to it yet. I just watched the TV show, so I was kind of curious to see what the book series was like, if there were similarities. So far, it's very similar. Like I'm kind of reading it, almost knowing like what is going to be stated next, but We'll see, we'll save that for the, like, I don't know, probably mid-April by the time I actually do the review to keep me accountable. And that's that. So again, the book is called Chase Darkness With Me by Billy Jensen. He is a friend of Michelle McNamara and give it a go if you feel like it or just check out his website because he produces a bunch of stuff and it's interesting. So if you're into true crime, it might be up your alley. And that's pretty much it. Make sure you hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you are interested in travel, cooking, and the occasional rant or monthly book review, thanks for watching.